give you praise, God. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for your goodness. So how can I inspire you tonight? And you say to me, you better figure it out real quick. <laughs> well, Devin's going to be preaching. But he that dwells in the secret place, amen? He that dwells in the secret place with all his heart, soul, and strength. He that dwells there. That says, where's your dwelling at? Say, well, I would say, well, I'm out in the country just about three miles west of here. That's my dwelling place. But where do you dwell? He that dwells in the secret place. What's, what's so secret about that? It's a place where the IRS can't find you. <laughs> Amen. He can't find you. Nobody can find you. Only God can find you in that place. And that's where you find God in that secret place. Praise God. He shall abide so close to God. It says under a shadow, but he shall abide so close because he's in that secret place. Nobody, the, the, the male man don't know how to get there. Most people don't know how to get to that secret place. And that secret place is just kind of a place for you and God. Amen. That's, that's a secret place. It's, it's just between you and him. Uh, when I say that, it's, it's like that's where you really meet God. He comes in such a way that you're familiar with. You know, I, I, I know, I know Ted, I know Dorothy and you know, we talk and we're friends, but you, you're, you're not my, you're not that secret place that I have with God. It, that's altogether different. Amen. Even with Suzanne, it's different. I love you guys, but that's what she's she's just gets in a little bit deeper than anybody in this church. Amen. There's something very special there. And because we made a covenant before God that we were going to dwell with one another forever. Amen. And when you confess Jesus as Lord, did you not make a covenant with God? Yes, you did. You made a covenant with God. You, you had a, a marriage gathering on that day that you were born again. And you made a covenant with God that I'll never leave you, God. I'm married to you. I'm the bride. You're the groom. He says, you got that right. I am. If you'll stay with me, because I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll never le let you out in the cold. But you can walk anytime you want. God says, I want you to remain in that secret place, that special place that you have for me, that special place, that special place, my special place in the Lord. That's her own deal. Amen. That's her own relationship. That's a spirit of God that has made that, made that special between her and God. Amen. And between you and God. I don't know what it's like when Jan gets in the spirit. I have no idea. I have a good idea. I have a good idea, maybe. But to know, to know that I know, I don't. Only she knows that. Amen? Amen. He that has that secret place in God will be very close to God. That's why it says under the shadow of his wing. That's very close to God. Not, not everybody has that. You know what? The closer you get, the better it is. The closer it gets, the more of a say you have with God. Not everybody's on the same level with God. They can be. They can be all in. I believe that the 12, they were, they were all on the same level. Although Peter, James, and John, he took them up on the mountain. I don't know why he left the others down there. Maybe they were trying to figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Peter, James, and John, you come with me. These other guys, they're, they're squabbling who's the greatest. <laughs> Can you imagine having that conversation? 
you imagine that here tonight? Heather's ripping on me. That she's better, she's greater than I am. And I'm ripping back on her. You're not. I'm the pastor. I'm greater than you. I've been here longer than you. And there we are going back and forth. That's what those other guys were doing. They really were. And then mom comes in on the scene for the sons of thunder. Jesus, I want one to sit at your right hand and the other to your left. He said, you have no idea what you're asking, lady. Well, got to give her this, A for effort. She was trying to stand in the gap for her kids. She wanted them right there with Jesus. You can't blame her either. Oh, what, what is it? Well, where was the dad at? <laughs> Sometimes you wonder where the... Where are the men are at? <laughs> Look at this. Where are the men at? If you can't, if you don't count Devin, we got three. Well, we got four. There's Pat back there. He's hiding though, so you can't count him. <laughs> I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. Why? Because I'm in that secret place. He is my fortress, and I will trust in Him. I will trust in him. These are the days when we really need to be close to God and trust in him. The things you see, don't worry about the monkey pox. Is it real? I'm sure it is. Ask a monkey. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes, pox. <laughs> If you're around a monkey that's got a sword dripping, don't get next to him. Amen. Is it real? I think it is real. I think we got some real sinister people through the world. But you be close to God. That is what you got going for you. Amen. Surely he shall deliver thee from the pestilence. Surely he will deliver you from the demon that comes to wage war on you. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. You'll trust in that holy place with the Lord. He's going to be my shield and buckler. He's going to be everything. He straps on the war boots on me, and I'm ready to go. Amen? Same way with you. I will fear no evil. Evil will fear me. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Amen? When you walk into the presence of hell, you just scatter it. You just scatter it. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. The things that you cannot see, you'll not be afraid of. You, you won't even fear death. You shouldn't even fear death. You shouldn't, you shouldn't fear it. But I understand. If I'm going to get hit by a Mack truck tomorrow, I'm sure I'm going to run for my life. <laughs> <laughs> and try to outrun him. <laughs> Did you see that old man run? <laughs> Only Elijah could run like that. <laughs> a two days journey for a semi, and he does it in one day. <laughs> he was pagan out at 80. <laughs> Figure that one out. He must walk with God. Amen. We give God praise all the time. I mean, really. Give him praise. And I know you got a lot going on. A lot of people do have a lot of things going on. A lot of things run interference on you, on your praise time with God. The demons know. They know when you try to get, you never wonder why it's so hard for you. It's golly, I haven't really praised God. You ever wonder why that is? Because the demons don't want you to. They do a pretty good job. You really have to admit, Satan has a whole world deceived. Tell you what, if, if I could hire a man, he'd be the one I'd hire if he wasn't so evil. <laughs> he gets the job done. Amen. <laughs> he really does. He's all business. We need to be all business.
We're the only Jesus this world is going to see, amen? That's why we got to be all in. I don't know of an angel that makes people rich. God can. But I don't know of an angel that ever said anywhere in the Bible, I come to make you rich, but I know demons do. I know demons do. They make corporations rich. They have assignment on them. And they like to make you poor. You hearing me? You ever wonder why you don't have any money sometimes? Big old fat demon. Likes to make you poor. And if he can make you needy, you can't help anybody else. Amen? He likes to make you without the power of God. He knows when you go into praise and worship, power of God's going to come down upon you. And you're going to be an asset for God. In other words, God can call you and say, hey, I want you to pray for so-and-so. And it's going to make a difference. He don't want you doing that. He knows that you have the power of God on the inside of you. So he does everything he can do to say, oh, you don't really believe that works, do you? It ain't going to work. When did Peter start sinking? When he didn't think it was going to work for him. Even when he was walking in the supernatural, what did the devil do? Boom! Better get scared. That wave's going to get you. Just when he was doing, he was walking. You ever feel like that? Just when I just feel like I'm, I got God all over me and all once, where to go? They got to come to stop you. It's called a good fight of faith. Amen? Say, well, I don't care about him. No, but the devil cares about you. A whole lot. Amen? He really does. He comes to wage war on you and your whole family. He even, in fact, I'll tell you what, if you side in with him, he even give you a little money. You say, why am I keep our own snake eyes? Because the snake is in it. Amen. I guess, I guess that's a good one. I don't know. I've heard snake eyes is like good, right? <laughs> now you don't throw the dice when you're with the Lord. Amen. He is your dice. He is the one that brings wealth to you. Amen. He is the great I am. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Oh, yes. That's the biggest thing you can work on, just being in the presence of God and building that up. Amen. Build that habitation for the Lord. That when people walk in your house, they go, wow, hey, it's peaceful in here. You don't want people to come over your house all once they're rubbing their forehead. Golly, gee. You hearing me? <laughs> it's like, what do you got going on? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, the most high. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he has given his angels charge. That's when you're really close to God. Angels watch over you. That's what we need. Each believer needs that. We say we have a guardian angel. Some people say, he's just, my angel's asleep. He might be. Because it's all about a closeness with God. Amen? As you get closer, the anointing of God comes on that angel too. And that same anointing comes on that angel, comes on you. Amen? So as the Lord helps you, he helps that angel that's watching over you. Praise God. There shall no evil befall you because your angel is anointed by God. Say, take care of that one. Praise God. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. That's every way. You can't go out before it's time. If the devil, if my people perish for lack of knowledge. If the devil can have access to you, he can kill you before your time. God said, you know, I had, a, I had a lot to do. I had a lot I wanted to do. I had more I wanted to do through you, but the devil killed you. Say, how did that, how did that happen? He says, you, you needed to make me your habitation. You needed to have a strong relationship with me. Well, I know Jesus. I mean, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you know him? 
Do you keep that knowing going on? Or are you like some married people? They don't say, ah, me and my wife, we, we haven't had relations for, for years. Okay? How that, that slides over unto God. God says, yeah, me and, me and so-and-so, we, ha we haven't been talking much for years. When you're, when you're a person of commitment, you're committed. Here's another word for that that I was looking for. Remember when we were talking about that one person, that she is a person of... No, wasn't wasn't commitment. No, 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 no. You, when you think of it, you, you, you just yell. Yeah, you give me a holler. It's called dedicated. It's more than that. It's that word that we, we were talking. Loyal. Ooh, that's different, ain't it? Loyal. A person that's a person that's loyal. They're loyal. They're loyal to God. They're loyal to their mate. You hearing me? When you're loyal to the people in your church, you're going to be loyal to God. Amen? You're not the person that gets up out of your seat and, act, and acts like nobody's around you. No, no, no. You're the person that gets up and says, hey, how you doing? And then God comes to you, hey, how you doing? Oh, I feel your presence, God. God says, you gave them, other people, your presence. Now I'll give you my presence. You were loyal. You're loyal to the people around you, and I'll be loyal to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who a loyal person is. They're loyal to their wife. They're loyal to their, their husband. They're loyal to their children. They're loyal to them. They lay their life down for them. I mean, really. They're loyal to one another. That's who they are. And they can't separate that from them. It's a personality trait of being totally loyal. That's why you know a secret place, because you're loyal. You're loyal to God. You don't just know Jesus. You're loyal to him in every facet, in every way. In fact, you even go to God and say, how can I be more loyal? I want that secret place with you. I want that special place between you and I that no one knows. You know what God says? I'm going to give you a name. In the book of Revelation, I'll give you a name that nobody knows. That, may, that name means something between you and God. God says, I'll give you that name. Now, what name would you like? You know, when we name our kids, we need, really need to, of course, none of us have done that, but we really need to, needed to pray over that a little bit. You don't name your kid Jasmine or Incubus or Succubus. You say, who is that? Those are names of demons. Well, I know a lot of people that name. Yeah, I know. We need to really think about what we're... You know, years ago, they used to go into the Bible and they used to pick out a Bible name because you're safe with that. Amen? We need to watch because God said, I'm going to give you a name and, and that name is going to be very special. Very special, because you make God very special. How many make God special and stay with that? Only a few. And that, that, in, that includes me, too. i got to keep him in that special place. i got to keep him in that special place. You ever see old people, they don't talk to one another, mom and dad there for the fireplace? He don't even know she's there anymore. She don't even know he's there anymore. But when they leave, it's boo-hoo, right? And I understand all that. But we need to know that God is there right beside us. And we need to let him know that we're 
too. Amen. We need to keep that. Not everybody's like that, but I know that some old people are like that. I don't know how they grow so far apart. I guess just kind of the way life is. If you don't, if you don't stoke the fire, you don't make sure. I told Susanna tonight, she's, she's homesick. I told her tonight, yeah, she's got, got this sinus infection. If she gets sick, she really gets sick. And I told her, I says, uh, I got run to the I got, <laughs> I got to run to the bulls and I got to get something to eat. And I said, I'll get you some soup, but don't expect it until I get home tonight. And I just I called I called bulls and I said, get my food on uh, food on the table. And this is what I need. I need some soup for my wife. And I got I just hammered it down. I was I wasn't there 10 minutes. Two eggs over easy. <laughs> Sausage. <laughs> Ash browns and an English muffin. Ten minutes. They must have looked up at me and said, "Who? It's a weirdo up there." <laughs> and, I, and then I thought, "I am going to take her this soup." Amen. I'm going to take it to her. I don't care. I can be a little late for church. I wasn't really late at all, but I ran that out to her and I went in and I says, "Honey, I got the soup for you." How else are we supposed to be? Amen? Are we supposed to keep track and say, well, you didn't bring me soup when I wasn't being good. <laughs> no, we don't do that. And everybody knows we don't do that. You weren't there, God, when I really need you. God said that was always there. We're there anyway. Amen? <clears throat> he said... Your angels are going to be there. You're going to tread on the powers of darkness. Because you have set your love upon me, says the Lord, therefore, I will deliver you. Hallelujah. I will deliver you. You've set your love. What love do you have? Who are you loving anyway? You loving his mighty hand or you loving his face? You know, when I look in those little Grandchildren, Maya, just want to, just want to, you know, I can't eat their face, but you just want to eat them up. You just really do. You just, they're just so cute. They're just soft cheeks. And I go to Theo and I, I just go like this and he's there FaceTime and go like this. He knows what I'm going to do. I'm just brushing his little cheeks. Are we seeking God like that? Oh, I just seek you, God. We seek, or are we seeking his right hand? We need, well, I want, we want your blessings. I'm just declaring, I'm just declaring a lot of money. Really? I'm declaring that I'm going to finally get it right with my Lord. That would be the best thing. Amen. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I'll set him on high. You know what? You've been, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've been set on low long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you ever look at your gas gauge? You just hate it when it's it's laying on E. Speaking of the, the woman that I love with all my heart, she'll drive home, she'll park that car right in the garage, and it's dead on E. I, say, I don't think I can get to a gas station. <laughs> That's never a good feeling, amen. I'll set you on high. I'll feel your spiritual tank overflowing because you have loved me. You have loved me and you love me. You don't look at you don't look at the day you got born again. That's like looking at your wedding picture. Look at honey, look how what you used to look like and me too. <laughs> This is a side view. <laughs> you don't do that. You're just there on the here and now with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I will set him on high because he knows my name. He has known my name, the intimacy of me, he knows who I am, Jesus. 
He shall call upon me and I will answer him. That means God says, you'll call upon me and I'll answer you. You call upon me and I'll answer you. Why? Because you've always been calling upon me and I know that voice. The shepherd knows his, the voice of his sheep. Yeah. And the sheep know his voice. Because they're real close to him. I hope I inspire you tonight to say, I want to get, I want to be close to God. I want to be close to God. I want to be in the anointing of God. I want to be in his power. When I think upon him, I want the spirit of the Lord to encapsulate me. I will set him on high. You can't do anything unless you got something going on in your life. Amen. If you're set on low, you can't, you ain't got nothing going on. You set on low, you say, hey, would you pray for me? You say, you might as well find somebody that's set on high because I'm out of gas. Right? You're set on low, the Holy Spirit. You can't help anybody. But if you're set on high, because you spend time in the presence of God, like I said, we've had people, all, all my Christian life, people have come into my house. They don't do it all the time. But I've had people come in when I lived over on Dorothy Drive. I don't know if anybody remembers me living over there, but I'll tell you what, that was a long time ago. People would come in and say, it's so peaceful in here. And we had kids. So it, was, it wasn't the, that type of peace they were looking for. It was the presence of God. Amen? That's what you want. When I get around you, you want people to say, when I get around you, I feel a peace. I feel God. I feel the presence of God. Amen? Instead of them rubbing their forehead, I feel hell. It, it gets like that. It is like that. It is like that. You're going to carry one or the I've had family members come, and I was so glad when they left. <laughs> Believe me, because I know the spirit. And it's like a war going on between light and darkness. I try to be nice. So when you're leaving, <laughs> it's like you look out and you say, oh, I should, I should go into this. You look out, you don't say, oh, they brought the dog. You say, oh, they brought their demons. <laughs> Jesus. And if there's going to be a fight, let there be a fight. Amen. Amen. He shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I will be with him in trouble. That's what we need. A lot of trouble, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, but God said, I'll be with you in trouble. I will deliver him. This is a cool part. Not only deliver him, he said, I will honor you. Honor you. That's setting you up if God honors you. I give you the crown of kingship. That's the demon's worst nightmare. Oh. He's going to lay us out. She's going to lay us out. She's going to kick our tail every time she got. Why does God do that? He says, because you're worthy of it. I know you're going to use it for my kingdom. You know what? You know why a lot of people. Why a lot of people never get there where they need to be, and I'm, I'm even pushing for that place, is because they always use their gift for themselves. It's true. They'll use their gift. If the gift is making money, they'll use it for themselves. Instead of saying, God, I got some money, and I'm looking, how do you want me to spend that? 
when do you want me to spend that? God knows that. Nothing wrong with having cash on the, on the, on the side. It's what you intend to do with that. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I'll satisfy him. What do you want? Why do you want to live long? Why do you want to keep living? That might be a good question that we can ask ourselves. Right. We say that. We say that. But truly, we know all the right things to say, right? Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we've learned that one too. <laughs> we want to live for Him. We want to live for him. Paul said, I just, I really want to go to heaven. I've had enough of this. I've been whipped five times, just like Jesus, 39, stri 39 stripes. They had gave me 40, but the, the, the 40th one, they figured that kills you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So we're going to give you 39. Devin talked about it last week, a day and a night in the sea. He said, I've really suffered. God said, I'm going to give you a long life. Paul was there for Jesus. Well, that was Paul. That's where we're at right now, here tonight. And I pray, I got to live up to this standard that I just laid out to you. I got to live up to it. I got to be part of it. Satisfy him with long life and I'll show him my salvation. Amen? This is how it should be. When you walk into heaven, it's like walking in after hard day's work. You should walk into heaven being, you just whipped. Whew. Gave it my all, God. Gave it my all. You look tired. Jesus says, I am tired. I am tired, and I'm not tired because I just, I'm old. I'm tired because I work for you really, really hard, amen? So when you get home, if you're not tired after you've been to work all day, <laughs> you haven't been to work, amen? Secret place, secret place, secret place. I pray that you and I accomplish that in our life. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pat, we're going to give Devin. The real, the real one. All right, strap that thing on, Devin. Check there you two. go. Praise God. Yeah. Supposed to do that before we... <laughs> you got the mic on the inside, son. <laughs> Sorry about that. There you go. You're I good. I was getting polished, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> You're good to go. You're good to go. Thank you. Amen. Oh, I got some mail. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> we got mail. You got mail. All right. Praise God. What a what an awesome thing we get to come here every night. Every night we want to. Pastor says the doors are always open. If you have a key, you can come anytime. Amen. That's right. If you don't have a key, can't get in. Yeah. God, we just thank you. I just I just pray right now, God, you would help me just speak clearly, truthfully. And we would just we would we would honor you in reverence, God, knowing that. We live to please God and not man. And that sets us apart from the world. Amen. We give you praise, God. 
give you praise. Being in the truth, being in the truth and waiting on God for the promise is what I want to talk about. See you, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, being in the truth is something that we have to want. Being the truth is something that we love. We learn to love. Amen. So when we come into the truth, we come into the place of that secret place that Pastor's talking about. That's right. And that truth is very rare. Very few people know what, what it really is. Very few people know how it really looks, how it operates, what it, what it feels like, and what it is. And so we, we just come to God with our whole hearts, and we start to slowly step into the kingdom little by little, and we start to figure out, okay, this is what truth is like. We're like little children. This is what truth is like. This is what, this is what it feels like. This is what it looks like. This is how it operates. This is how it functions. But people don't, most of the time, people don't see truth as what it actually is. People don't see it. They don't think about it the right way. Um, they hear a Bible story or they hear a good sermon, and they think that the, maybe the sermon was true, but what is, at, what is truth? That's what Pilate asked Jesus. And that's a good question, honestly. What is truth? And I'm going to get to that here. But I feel like God is making it more clear, at least to myself than ever before, what truth is and, and how we should think about it and what it looks like. Truth is a rare commodity. It is known by few, understood by fewer people don't know what it really is it's more than just knowing stories in the bible it's a feeling and that feeling is the holy ghost the spirit of jesus you are a king then Pilate said Pilate. jesus answered praise god <laughs> pastors preaching everywhere praise the lord what's going on you gotta get in there I feel like I'm off center a little bit. Maybe that's just me. All right. Or get this pulpit in the right where the truth is. Right. <laughs> is that why you straighten every picture in my house? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That one time though. <laughs> You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. There's something that's very telling about what Jesus is saying. He said, those who are on the side of truth, they stay. They listen to what I have to say. Those who are on the side of truth, listen to me. And Jesus, if you don't, if you don't, you might not think about it, but Jesus is lowly and act, he, he's all powerful, but he'll back away from you just to see if you'll follow him. He'll back all the way up just to see if you'll get close to him. Because he wants to know where, where our hearts are at. He wants to know, are you in this for me? Are you in this because of what I am? Are you wanting me for who I am? Or are you just here because... Whatever reason, he wants, he wants us to be with him. Jesus said, all those who are on the side of truth listens to, listens to me. God tests each person to see if they really love and will choose truth or the lie of the world. Let me read this real quick. This is the verdict. This is John 3, 19. Light has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. God likes to see where we're going to stand. And it's not even a thing of any spite towards us at all. It's no, God is the master. He's the man, he's the head of the plant. He's the CEO. He's the top, top man who governs everything that he's made. 
and he has to test everything that he's made because he wants to be worshipped in truth. And so he tests our hearts. He, te- he tests our minds. He, he wants to see where we're at. So he'll, he'll send us through life, and we don't know why we're going through certain things, but he lets us go through things because without us even realizing, he's testing our minds. He's testing our hearts. He's testing us. He's, he's seeing, okay, what do you love right now? Do you love the truth or do you love the lie? And see, most people, they love the lie. They love, they love the darkness. That's what the scripture says. Light is coming to the world, but people love the darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So God, he comes to every, each one of us. And, and those people who are watching, I'm, this, is, this is the truth. He comes to each one of us and he says, where are you going to stand? Where are you going to stand when I test your heart, when I test your mind? Where are you going to be? That's me, me included. Where are we going to be? Are you going to be on the side of truth? If I were to show up tonight, will you be on the side of truth or would you be on the side of the lie? We're here tonight because we love the truth. So we should be encouraged in our heart that we're here. Well, God, I, I guess I'm on the side of truth because, yeah, I'm here. But if, 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 if we're not in God, if we walk away, if we walk away from God, whose side are we on? And if the shoes fit, kick them off. If, whose side are we on? Who, whose side do we go with? The truth. That's what, that's what we're after. So, what, so I just want to talk about the truth and explain more and more what I feel like God has showed me, it is so far. It's always, it's always a process. It's always a journey. But God wants us to be very familiar with the truth. Truth has a certain texture to it. And the more a person gets involved in it, the more familiar they will be with it. And the better they will be able to discern when it's there and when it's not there, when it's spoken and when it's not spoken. People who are blind learn to usually learn to read uh, what's it called grail Grail. and it's all by feeling and it's they put their hands on it and they have to touch it over and over and over can only sense it by what it feels like and they train themselves okay this is what this is they felt it enough times that they know what this is they feel it and they know okay yes this is what this is. So we are to be as, as people who love God, like the sheep that know the master's voice. We know our father's voice. We know our shepherd's voice because we feel him all the time. If we don't feel him, we'll be, we'll, sometimes we'll get rubbed the wrong way because we are in something else. But if we know him, we're going to be comfortable with him. And when he speaks the truth, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go with us and not against the grain. If, a, if the truth goes against the grain, that means something's wrong on the inside of us. This isn't taught. I've never heard this kind, of, this kind of thing taught in any church about knowing the truth and focusing on, okay, what is, what is the truth? Pastors quote scriptures, but they don't get into the spirit because they, they themselves really aren't all the way in the spirit, so they can't give you all the spirit. We here at this church are in the spirit, and we will prove that we're in the spirit by casting the demon out of you. That proves that the, that the finger of God has come. That proves that the power of God is there. So there's proof. There's demonstration of the spirit along with what we're saying. If we just talked and we didn't have any acts to prove what we were, we would just be like every church. So, truth rubs, truth rubs some people the wrong way because it goes against the grain of everything that they are, which is a lie. They are living a lie, and they love the lie they are living in. They love the darkness. That's not us here. So, whoever's listening, I hope you're getting the Holy Ghost convicted right now. <laughs> they love the lie they're in. Bad to the bone. They love it. See, they, that's, what they, that's what they accept in them. That's what they feed off of. That's what they love. 
But that's not the truth. That's not what we love. We love God. We are in the truth. We don't love the lie. If we love the lie, we'd be in it. And we'd love it. And, and when we hear the truth, we're like, ah, the light. Someone turn it out. And that's what the world does. You ever notice how uncomfortable it is if, if you carry the spirit of God and you walk into, walk into a group of people at work or wherever it is, you never notice how uncomfortable it gets sometimes. Just being there, like today at work, I was, I love everyone I work with. Like I genuinely do love them. I know I'm not friends. Goody. I'm not, some people are goody goody to everyone and they, they like just to be everyone's friend. And with that, they accept everything that they are and they feed off of everything that they are. And like my coworker says, I'm everyone's, it's like everywhere I go, I'm like I'm everyone's friend. Like, well, that's good, I guess. But there's, there should be a difference. Where, there should be a difference with us being the people of God, being the salt. So we go into a place, there should be some friction. And that friction doesn't have to always be with our words. It's in the spirit because you can just feel it. You just feel the difference. You, you're around someone who's, who's like this morning, I was just being around. You know how clicks are. They, 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 they were in high school, probably even grade school. and They were in high school and it's no different in the workplace. Some people just click better with others, but normally it's just because they, they share the same spirit. And I always walk by myself everywhere I go. Sometimes I walk with this person or that person, just depending on this would make conversation. I know them from work, but in general, it's like I don't gravitate towards the group of people standing around because I can already feel in the spirit that they're all just chumming together with their demons and they're all just getting filled with each other's hell. So I can't stay if I if I do. I just, I don't, but if I need to for like it's a meeting or something, God gives me the grace to do it, but I just can't remain in that spot. I walk around them. I'm not with you. That's the spirit. I'm not with you. I'll be kind to your face. And I, because I genuinely do like you, I genuinely do care. But in the inside, I know, like Pastor said, there's a war between light and darkness and there's a fight. So I can't, I can't walk next to them and stay with them. I can't be with them because I'm not of them and they're not of me. There's a difference. There's a difference. Don't eat or drink with them. Yeah. Yeah. You, there's a difference. There's a difference. So. So when push comes to shove, this is people who, who, are, who love a lie. So when push comes to shove and they come to a T intersection, one way the truth, the other way a lie, they choose the lie every time because that's what they love and that's what they accept. The more a person is familiar with the truth, the easier it will be to recognize the lie. And the more a person gets in the truth, the more, the more it becomes who they are. Everyone, it's a, everyone goes through it. It's where when you first get saved and there's all this junk in a person, all this lead, all this wickedness, you get like the golden nugget of the kingdom. You get the Holy Spirit, but it starts out like a mustard seed. It starts out small. There's things that even when truth is spoken to you, it grades against you on the inside because there's so much of you still that's still in the world. But over time, as God refines a person, he sharpens you. You start to that stuff starts to fall by the wayside, and you can see it in people's faces that come here. When they start coming here on a regular basis, you can see it in their faces. Absolutely. They become more like God. They become more life, more free, more happy, more joyful because they're shedding the world that they've carried their whole lives. The person has been here for a while, or whatever it might be, or they've never been here. When they come in here, it's a different story. They get they, there's a doubt, there's a down attitude, there's a there's a darkness. But God says. That's what you love. That's what you want. Do you want to change? I'm here for you. I'll change it. But until you want to change, my hands are tied. I'm not going to force anything on anyone. So that's where that's where it's at. Just coming here and wanting God and letting that stuff just fall by the wayside. It's not even a hard, it's not even a hard thing to do for God. He just does it. It's just an automatic thing that happens when we come. This and this kind of thing is so rarely preached and taught on because the, the demons know that what brings true power and what truly 
attacks them in the spirit is when someone's truly holy before God. When someone's really truly living a holy life, the true power of the spirit of God comes upon them. And when they walk into a place, they have authority over the demons. And the demons know this, so they keep a person as dirty as they can. They keep them watching pornography. They keep them watching filthiness. They keep them watching everything that's not God because they know they can, if they can fill you with a lie, if they can fill you with hell, you won't be effective. We won't be effective. No one will be effective if they're filled with hell. When we come here, on a, when we come here during the week, we're getting filled with the spirit of truth. That's one of the benefits that happens. So we, God wants us to be filled with the spirit of truth. That's the only way that we can actually stay in the truth is constantly being filled with it because the world will pull you away. I, somewhere in my heart of hearts, I just feel like saying, God created life to be like a musical. Before there was sin, everything was like that. Walking down the street. Go in the Dairy Queen. Hallelujah. My wife loves me and I love her. Everything was meant to be so easy, so light, so peaceful, so refreshing, so full of God. And then the devil came in. That serpent, that lie. You should hate, you should really hate the devil. That lying serpent came in. Ah. So did God see? <laughs> Can you just picture that? <laughs> and, then, and then Eve says, Well, he said we could eat all the trees of the garden except for the tree of knowledge and good and evil, right there in the middle. Oh, no, Eve, no. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> So you can imagine that plays out and then sin enters the world and then death through sin. And so now we have to fight to stay in the grace. Now we have to fight for the, for the glory. Now we're singing the blues. Now we're singing the blues. Yeah. God created life. God created life to be such a wonderful, amazing experience. Like just today I was, I was sitting on my porch and I got this this whistle that I've been practicing and playing. It's really fun. And I, it brings in the spirit of God. I can feel it. Anyways, um, I was just looking at the sky. And I know I, I'm, I'm just recognizing in myself what happens, what's happening in me, and the ways I've felt in the past in moments like this. So I'm looking up at the sky. And I, and I realized that my whole life, and this is every one of us, the devil comes in any way he can to snatch any precious moment that he can. So it's like you, God wants you to look up in that moment at the sky and just, wow, the wonder and awe of all gods. Look at that. Amazing. But so often we don't ever really get to stay in that place because the devil comes and, ah, he gives you a backache or someone gives you a call or you get a thought that comes into your head like, oh, man, I got to do this. I got to do that. It's like they're so after you, man, woman. The demons are so after us. They're so after. That's why they hate when we live holy before God because we stomp on their heads. They hate when we love God because we truly kick them out. We truly have power over them. And people who are worldly Christians who come to church but they don't have a godly life, they walk they, they don't really love God. They really love themselves and they love the world. And I the, hear Christians that go right down the street, right down the street from here, and they're cursing. They're saying they're acting just like the world. Who do you really serve, Christian? If you acting just like the world, come out of darkness. Come into the truth. Come into life where we are, and we're happy. And our faces show it. I'm not saying that we don't go through hard times. I'm not saying that my face isn't downcast here and there. But God raises up my countenance upon him. And I'm filled with joy and love and excitement. Despite everything the devil does. 
What a God we serve. Amen to that. I can count. This is a this is a verse that we talk about here and there, but I want to look at it in this light with truth. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and a white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Part of the gold that we buy refined in the fire is truth. Understanding what truth is. Truth, Jesus said, if you if you hear my words, if you listen to me and you do what they say, you will know. And the truth will set you free. Because when you get set free, what are you getting set free from? A lie. You're getting set free from a lie. What do lies do? They bind you. They bind you on the inside to where there's a there's an inner struggle that goes on. When, I, when, the, when the word of truth goes out, there's an inner struggle going on. There's an inner struggle. It has to do with your will. Light and darkness, and which way are you going to go? It's like there's a dial, uh, there's light, there's darkness, and there's a struggle on the inside. And it's just God's blowing to, to get it to go to the light. And you're kind of like, yeah, I don't like the light. I like the darkness more. And you're like, well, I can't do nothing about that. And so you go this way, and then you're like, so there's this inner struggle that's going on with people who aren't all in. If you're all in, good news. You're in the light. Praise God. But if there's an inner struggle, says the Lord, you're on the fence. You're on the fence. You got to get to one side. Amen. <laughs> so who likes, who likes hanging in on those tough moments with me? Amen. <laughs> That's what the truth should do, right? If the truth is the truth and it doesn't change, and I'm supposed to be of the truth, which I believe and I know I am, then my words should not should go out in truth and they should cut off anything that's not of God. And it should cut off anything in me that's not of God. I'm not exempt from it. The truth is truth. And anything that's not truth should fall by the wayside. It's really actually pretty cool how simple God's made this whole thing to be. It's not very, it, there is complexities to it, but it's like the, the bare bones of it. He makes it pretty simple. You know, there's truth in everything God's made. You ever see the, you ever feel the wind? There's truth. Wind of the spirit of God, even. There's truth. You ever see an eagle fly and just, no sound, no music, or you, you just see it. God put truth in that. That's who God is. There's truth. There's a feeling. There's a majesty. There's a, there's a power of God at work in front of our eyes. Paul said, look at all creation. It testifies to what God has made, what he's done. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God. Isn't it good that we don't have to, we don't have to be a slave to the lie? We don't have to serve our own flesh. We don't have to love our own lives unto death. We can love God. We can choose him every time. I wrote a lot of this stuff out, but I realized that through my, just, I don't want to repeat it. So being in the truth, I'm going to tie this into waiting on the promises of God. Being in the truth helps a person wait on God's promises. If, if a, they have to want the truth. At first, the truth hurts. It gets painful. It's painful at times like that because it goes with correction. But then after, after a while, a person moves on. Right? Hopefully, hopefully none of us, including myself, are, are going to be here for 5, 10, 15 years, and we still haven't moved on. We got to move on. We got to move on to the, into the new and into, into the truth. That's what God wants. Otherwise, and this is, the, this is what happens if we don't want the truth, otherwise a person will take shortcuts instead of staying on the long and narrow path that leads to life. 
When a person takes a shortcut, they are, they are taking a path of death. Death to the promise of what God wanted to give them. Shortcuts come easy and seem easier because in a sense they are, but there is a trade-off. Life is costly. Look at the price Jesus had to pay. God's promises are costly because how, of how good they are and how much, they, how much life they bring. When a person takes a shortcut, it means God's promised them and in order to get the outcome that they want, that God has promised in his own way, they, they take a shortcut, which means they take a path outside of God, of what he wants them to do to get to that same outcome. But what they don't understand is that there's a cost in that. And that cost is death to the promise of what God is, wants to give them. So in a way, the, it's like, it's like uh, it's exactly what the, what the devil does, like with Adam and Eve or anything. He, he promises a good thing. And it gives you an easy way to get there. But that easy way will cost you everything. But at the same time, when we walk the narrow path, that costs you everything too. But the only end is you get abundant life. And you get refined in the process. And you get built up spiritually, emotionally, financially, physically. Everything, everything happens in that process. So God, does, he, likes, he has to send a person through that. And that's where most people fall off or they compromise or settle for not being in the truth, and they won't hear the truth, they'll go to a place where they feel comfortable. They feel okay. Pastor says he preaches them in and he preaches them out. Praise God. Good riddance. How would you like to have, I don't know, 50 more people in here that just hate your guts? <laughs> and don't want God. They smile at your face, but really like, yeah, I don't really like you. <laughs> so that's what kind of what God wants. He, he likes to keep it pure, keep it true, keep it holy. And when he decides to grow, which when, when he does, he will, then it'll be good. It'll be right. It won't be a thousand people and maybe 50 of them are truly saved. It'll be a thousand people, and hopefully like 10% of them are saved, which would be like, what, 100? Let's go for the 100. Yeah. We, just being all in, being in the truth, wanting everything that God has to give is what it's all about. So I pray that we would, each one of us, especially those watching, would feel the truth understand that the truth is more than just knowing the truth is indeed the spirit of god the spirit of truth you would you would have the conviction of truth on the inside and it wouldn't be anything don't don't believe the, a lie of the enemy that wants to take that and just make you feel bad go into don't go into god with all of your heart understanding that he wants you to know the truth but understanding that at the end of the day we're all accountable we're all accountable to god and, and we keep ourselves accountable by serving God with, a, with our whole hearts and listening to what the body says. That's what the body is for, is to help keep each other sharp. Jesus, Jesus will give one person something that he doesn't give another, and then he'll give another person something that he doesn't give another, because it all has to balance out. It all has to sharpen each other. It all has to work together. So understand, understanding that truth is... One thing I didn't say that or, 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 that's very important. That's truth is a, it's actually a devil. It's really easy to get off on one side where there's, there's no Holy Ghost. There's no power of God. You get on the other side where everything's God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything. So it's, it's a delicate balance. You ever try to balance like a, like a pencil or something on like a, a, a round rail. You know how delicate that would be to balance a pencil on like a, a round rail? It's like you really have to get that thing just right. Get it just right on the right place, right on the edge. And that's how God makes it spiritually for us, where we constantly have to be sensitive to him to be just in the right place with him on the inside. 
that secret place, the truth, the right way, just in the right place, just in the right time. But what's cool about that is that when you get the hang of it, you can start riding with God and you can start to feel his spirit on the inside. And you don't, you're not doing anything in the flesh. You're letting his spirit under, undergird you. You are really speaking truth. I mean, it's all true, but people can grab a hold of what you're just saying. Amen. Right now. Amen. Right now. If, if a person can just learn to lean back in the saddle with the Holy Ghost, right. not doing anything in the flesh. You'll notice you're doing something in the flesh when you get to force yourself. Amen. <laughs> it's all you. It's not now. Amen. Hallelujah. That's great. But say it in the spirit. What is it? What? How is the spirit going to say it? <laughs> Amen. Or sometimes, Amen. See, it's a whole balance with God. It's not always the same. It's a lie. It's a it's a living thing with God, where we constantly just sit back, balance. Okay, I feel the spirit of God. Now, what that what happens in that moment is that you learn to really center yourself in the Lord. You learn to really focus on them. And you, your, whole, your whole being is set on just being what God wants you to be and being with him. That kind of relationship is like young grasshopper. <laughs> Today we will learn how to focus on God. Yes. <laughs> and then that grasshopper is like on one leg. Oh, he falls over. And so there's days where we, we don't get it right. But God's like, tomorrow, same time, back again. <laughs> so it's, it's a really a wonderful thing. And it's cool because it's, God, God makes it like a, he makes it a skill. He makes it a thing that you have to be intentional about and you have to want it. Not everyone's there. And the cool thing is like once you, when you get the hang of it, man, you start to, get, you start to catch some big waves. Big waves in the spirit. You ever seen surfers? You ever watch surfer videos where they hop on their board? You know how long it takes them to be able to train themselves, to be able to get on that wave? Well, I got good news. God doesn't make it that hard. But I use that as an example because there is a discipline in it, and you have to want it. You just have to stand there. There's a song by uh, Michael W. Smith. It says, the wind is moving but I am standing still. The wind is moving. still. The wind is But I am standing still. Standing still. Now, that was, uh, that's not exactly how the song goes. But I was catching the wind of the spirit right there. Amen. I was feeling how God wanted me to sing it. Amen. And you know how waves are? See, God, truth. There's some truth in waves. You know how waves are? They come. And then it winds itself back up for another one. Then it brews up and then it's ready. And then it starts to wind back. <laughs> There's some truth in that. <laughs> There's some truth in that, and that's true because that's that's kind of how the spirit works. Like you, you ever read in the Psalms where it says, "Let your waves, oh God, deep cries out the deep. Let the waves of God's love crash on me." No, that's not exactly how it goes, but let the let the wave of God keeps coming keeps coming on me. So, like the surfer, God wants us to learn. Okay, get on your board. What's your board? That's your will. That's your inner man. Your will. Get on your board. We're gonna go surfing. Get on your board. Okay, so we're now we're getting up. Let's all do this right now. I'm not, this is more than just me. Right now, let's do this together right now. So we're all going to get on our board. So right now, in the middle of this, in our will right now, we're focusing on God. Okay, now we're like, we're like that surfer that's straddling the board, just kind of sitting out there on the wave right there. Now, the wind is moving, but we're standing still. Okay, so we're standing still. The wind is moving. Okay, now that wave is coming. Now we're straddling our boards. Now we're standing up right now. In ourselves, in God, we're focusing on God. We're standing on our board, okay, because the wave's coming. The wave of the Spirit of God's coming. Now we're focusing on God right now. Focus on God. Now the Spirit's moving. Now, what's cool about that is that when you're on the board, nothing else can touch you. The world can't get a hold of you. Nothing. 
everything's just cool. It's calm. It's down low. You're just weird. You're just with God. Don't be discouraged if, if maybe you didn't stay on your board. Just keep trying. God wants you to get there. God wants you just to, to be there. And if you're looking at me and you're saying, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you just got to love God more. You just got to want God more. Because you will. You will want him. You will um, get on that board. And there's really some cool things that God wants us to experience in him. But it, it just takes a it just takes a heart that wants him. So God, I just pray that everyone here and those watching would would if they didn't feel anything or if they just if they feel like, man, I'm just so out of it. God, I pray that you would touch their hearts, know that, hey, I'm showing you some things that I want you to be a part of. And this isn't any, this isn't anything but a coaching. And what you're seeing is just a guy who's coaching you. He's just a coach trying to help. So, God, I just give you praise. I pray for everyone that we would be we would be surfers in the spirit, God. We would just love you. We would we would we would ride the wave of your spirit in the truth day after day, knowing that you are what gives us victory. You're what gives us hope. You give us peace and you want us to just to ride on. We don't we, we don't do anything but just jump on board with what God wants, what he desires. God, we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You were talking about truth tonight. Now, we, as saints of God, bear witness to the truth on the inside of us, right? So when you're talking about getting that pencil to stay on that round cylinder, we should witness to that so deeply that as we're there, we're praying in our minds, that's what I want, God. That's what I want. Because if you, you wait to pray, you go, what did he say? Pencil somewhere? No. <laughs> no, you, you, you're, you're bearing witness to a lot of things that are said here tonight, whether it's that, that secret place is that that you just talked about right there. That secret place, but you bear witness to that. And so you're praying that, go, yeah, God, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's where I want to be, God. God says, I hear your prayer. That's where I'll take you. What good is it? I mean, are you going to really, I mean, what would we preach that you go, golly, that's such a truth. I never looked at it like that. Amen. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, what could we preach to you that it's like a total like, wow. But when you bear witness to what being said here tonight, that's the perfect time to pray. That's what I want. Right there. That's what I want. That's what I need. That right there. And all those other things will be added unto you. Amen. The clothing, the things that sustain you. Everything else will be added unto you, but it's that one thing that you need. And it's these truths that are being talked about that should like, that's what I need. That's what I need. And you're praying all through the sermon. That's what I need. That's what I need. And if you didn't, and I know lots of times we'll hear it and we won't be praying. No, you need to, you need to, because that's how much the truth should testify on the inside of you. Like you say, others say, amen. And some people say, amen. See, there's a difference there. There is a difference. One is testifying to truth. Amen. The other is just... just one's in truth. One's maybe not. One, one is not... One's in the spirit. One's in the spirit. All right, so you say, well, am I always in the flesh? No, you're not always in the flesh. You're just not in the spirit right there. You need to be in this. Say, God, you know what the truth is? I want to be in the spirit when I'm here at this church. I want to be in the spirit when we sing a song that 
Yeah, I like, but it, it, but what it says, I want to be in the spirit. Amen. I just want to be in the spirit. Can I give an example? Yes. When I'm when I'm worshiping God, kind of what I what I talked about about that balance. My whole my heart intent is just focused on God and on wanting Him, and it's out of that place where the wind is moving, but I'm standing still. God's spirit's moving, but I'm staying still. So everything that I want, I want. It's like. I want to be like a, a, a cheese grater where everything that comes out is just pressed because God wants it to come out. That's so it's just like if I'm sitting there, I don't say praise God because I want to. Well, I do want to. But like what, what I'm, the point I'm making is I'm waiting on God mm-hmm. and God's rising up in me. And before I know it, I'm saying hallelujah. Not because I want to. I do want to. But I want I want to be so one with God that everything that I do is just coming from that place of God shining through me. That's right. So that's, that's kind right. of what I'm talking Amen. Amen. So that's where you want to be. So what's truth? Truth is, is when you walk in a pack of hell, you're instantly in the spirit in warfare. You go home tonight and you feel hell, you're instantly in the spirit. You're instantly, because that's what you are. Instant. Instant. How's that scripture go? Instant in season and out of season. Instant in season and out of season. Instant. You're instant. And what makes that, to go with that, what's being instant in season and out of season, is that a person has so trained themselves, so loved God, to, mm-hmm. and so trained themselves in the truth that they've become like a like a stone. There you go. That they're never changing. It doesn't yeah. matter where they are. They're going to, wherever they, wherever they are, the spirit's going to be there because that's what they've yeah. honed themselves into. They've been so ground down by getting crushed by God. That all they want is God. He's crushed everything out of them. Mm-hmm. That all they want is God. It doesn't matter where they go. They're going to release the spirit of God. Amen. They're going to be the truth wherever they're at. After a while, the spirit of God is just always on you. Always on you. Always on you. Ready to meet, to meet it, the need. Whether you need a lot of Holy Spirit to worship him. It's time to, to walk in that. That's how John said, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. How do you, how do, you do that? Because you're always a vessel ready. And God says, all right, right now I want to use you. Right now you need to be used in spiritual warfare. Amen. Something cool, too. In the spirit, there's so many things that God wants us to experience. One of those things is it says in Acts how Peter fell into a trance. But what I felt like God is teaching me is that there's different degrees and levels of trances. Yep. And so it was prophesied to me that I was going to, be, I was going to have trances. And a trance really is just an it's just a different state of consciousness. It's just being it basically it's just being caught up in the spirit in a strong way. Having a vision. Having a vision. An open vision. Yes. Amen. But what I've experienced is that by walking into my calling, walking into what God wanted me to do, mm-hmm. he's rewarding me with his spirit in different ways. And it's like I saw in a vision, I saw a flash vision. It's like I had a storeroom and there was all these different kinds of oils. They all kind of look the same, but they're all these different kinds of oils. And it represented all these different things that God wanted me to do or just do here and there, but just a little bit of each thing. But it all was his spirit. And yeah. so, like, for instance, I got this flute. And I noticed I was just sitting there playing it. I was just playing it. And I just noticed I, I just started just to get into this different place, a different, a more deep secret place, just a different place than I was before. And it didn't matter what was going on around me. It's like before the cars would, would bother me because I always go by. It's like I'm trying to enjoy the atmosphere. And the <laughs> <laughs> every second on that road but as i as i played more and more i started to get into a different place where god was just taking me setting my feet high on a rock where it wasn't it didn't matter what was going on because the spirit of god was putting me into a, a trance because the music is your call yeah and when you get everything else is blocked out Amen. Amen. So you were in your call. You're called into the music. Amen. That's your big deal. Also, you do preach pretty good, too. Amen. But that's that's the deal. So I pray tonight that if you remember anything that's said, and I know you will, that's what you pray because you witness, "Ah, that's what I want. That's what I want. When we talk about freedom, that's what I want. I want freedom to serve him. I want freedom to be. Not, I want to get the heck out of here. I understand that. But what, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> you want to want to serve God. That's what I want. I'm tired of wanting to go through those pearly gates. I want to do a work for the Lord. God said, now you got it going. Amen. Amen. Father, we just pray right now. We just thank you, God. Let the, the, like Devin said, let healing power be all over each person. Healing in the spirit. Healing in the mind, wills, and emotions. Healing, God, to what their call is. What each one of your call is. Let the spirit of God hit you like a wave. Hit you and bring excellence into your life. Into that area. That's what we want. Yes. That's what we want. We want excellence in that area Pray. and only that area for each person. Whatever you're yeah. called to, be that. Yeah. Be that. Amen. Be that. In Jesus' my name, love you all. Yeah. Love you all. I really do. Amen. Praise report. Today, um, 